inside the Now Morning Show. Hope you're having a great morning so far this morning. We have an amazing artist featured inside our spotlight on Now. She's had her music featured on the big screen and graced many stages locally and internationally. She is a singer, a songwriter, wirebender, designer, model, and mother. Sharon Phillips is multi-talented and multi-skilled on many levels. Recently, she won Best Designer, Best Gown for the piece worn by it, which was worn by Tobago Top Model and Top Model TNT 2024 winner, Anaya Bird, at the Miss Tobago pageant. This morning, we'll dive into some of the work she's done and talk about her upcoming benefit concert, Elevate, which is carded for Mother's Day. Good morning, Sharon, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Natasha. Thank you all for having me this morning. It's a pleasure to have you on the show this morning. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm great. I'm not really a morning person, as you can imagine. Most of my life is in the night, but this is a job. I'm, I'm great. I'm blessed. Excellent. And I mean, you just mentioned most of your life being in the night. And we do know you, of course, as this incredible superstar. And knowing now that there's so much more to you than just that, I mean, you're a designer. How long have you been designing, Sharon? I've actually been designing since I was, well, I've been sewing since I'm eight years old, mm -hmm. um, professionally designing since I'm about 16. And oh, I've wow. been designing. And what sort of design have you done? I mean, I mean, we've seen, of course, the outfits, as we just mentioned there with Miss TNT Top Model 2024. But what other sort of designing yeah. do you do? So I am a complete creative. I like to pride myself in that. I do any form of design. Um, so I'm extremely into couture and avant-garde, but I'm also into wire bending. I'm into three-dimensional creations as well. I'm into stone sculpture, concrete sculptures. I, I, everything I do basically is a work of art. If even I cook a plate of food, it's going to look like a plate of art when I present it. So I take that designing element, three-dimensional especially, into almost every aspect of my life. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, Sharon, we're seeing some of your um, pieces now. Tell, tell us something. How long does it take? What is your creative process like to create these incredible, especially avant-garde pieces? Well, I have to say I've been trained by one of the best designers to ever do it in the Tobago space, which is Ms. Mar Mrs. Marcia Devines. And um, it, 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 it changes. I mean, it's all dependent. Your ability to express creative prowess from absolutely nothing from a flat plane. It, it depends a lot on how you feel and where your mindset is at. But from the time a client comes to me and said, okay, this is what I need. I start thinking of what has not yet been done or, or experimented with in the space. That's where I start. And a gown could take anything from two days to two months. It depends on what I'm doing. Absolutely incredible. Of course, example, this would have this gown on, on screen right now would have taken five days to create. This one would have taken something like about a week. This was the biggest gown ever for Heritage um, at that time with a trade of um, seven feet. But I did top that as well last year with um, the Heritage gown. And here you have Anaya. I'm very much into papier-mâché and the original art forms of Carnival as well. As a wire bender, I'm very much into that. It's, it's amazing to see, of course, with everything that you complete, you can see that it's unique. It's something that nobody else will have. And it's definitely something that will leave a lasting impression. And speaking about leaving lasting impressions, Sharon, let's talk about your workshop and concert that's going to be happening. What is the aim of your workshop, Elevate, for 2024? Okay, so Elevate was birthed out of a need in the creative sector. Someone who is very dear and close to me, who I'm going to mention in a short while, would have called me and let me know, hey, this is what is going on with me medically right now. And, you know, the doctors are stating that I should go a particular direction. I don't think that's the best thing for me. And that's something that we need to respect in the space with creatives. We want to do a lot, but there's a lot of physical constraints on our body. So that gave me an idea. You know, my father always said, if your cup is full and overflowing already, then you'd have no room for blessings. So sometimes we need to outpour in order to have that room to, for things to come in, new things to come in. So from that concept, Elevate, the workshop was born. 
we don't have very many capacity building offerings in the Tobago space, especially at the higher, more curative level of the creative sector. So my idea was, since I've been trained internationally, and I haven't seen very many people giving back in the space, I've teamed up with a couple of friends of mine from the creative sector, and we have decided to do a mega workshop. This workshop is for creatives by creatives. No longer the industry telling us how to express ourselves. This is us doing us to the fullest. So I've teamed up with Shuma Burke from Ibis TT to do contemporary dance. I've teamed up with Maria Bola out of We Papa to do um, creative art in terms of art and craft, as well as um, accessory making and stuff. And as an 18 time winner of the best design, best gown at national level and here in Tobago, I've decided to give back in terms of stage costuming because there are extremely huge lucrative buckets of opportunities in those sectors if we look at it as more than just what we do in the local space. Because if you look internationally, persons who do costuming, for example, the person who did costuming for the Wakanda movie would have made, would probably makes more money than the president of Trinidad and Tobago. So from those aspects, we really need to focus on the orange economy and the creative sector because there are a lot of end user offerings and a lot of lucrative um, offerings that are not yet being explored in the domestic space. I can hear that this is very dear to your heart and it's a brilliant initiative Ashen. hearing everybody who's coming together to be a part of this. So tell me something, yeah. what is your aim after this? What do you want to see happen once you have had this workshop? When we look at the creative sector, there's a lot of stifling in the space. And a lot of that is because a lot of skill set transfer is not happening. So a lot of important things are dying out. I would like to see, because I would be turning 45 this year, it's not my intention to hug the microphone or the stage or the camera, or I'm not an attention freak. So I don't think I'll be doing this for the rest of my life. However, I am making that very gradual shift from the stage to administration in order to help my local creatives elevate to a higher standard of the experience of being a creative in the international discussion. We are not yet up to par with a lot of things internationally. And those of us who have had the exposure and the training need to now pass this along. So that after the workshop, I expect to see people who would have taken part in the art and craft, for example, section. I expect to see them go into business and create financial opportunities for themselves. I'm expecting to see dancers who would have come out of this contemporary dance workshop, um, use their curated dance pieces to apply for the School of Juilliard. I mean, this has to be our, 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 our aim and directive. The sky is not the limit. I mean, shoot beyond the sky. Maybe there's something beyond that. We have to stop limiting ourselves. And for those who would be involved in the fashion designing, there's so many opportunities because we have now in Tobago the October Carnival. There's so many things going on all over the world, all over the region. We just need to train ourselves and put ourselves out there. I expect to see business generating after this workshop for and the creative sector. Well, we can see that this is something that will stimulate the orange economy. So hats off again to you yeah. and everybody involved who are dedicating yeah. the time as well to be able to ensure that there is something to come back at the end of the day, which we definitely will see happen. Sharon, when is this workshop taking place? So the workshop will be taking place from April the 28th to, April, to May the, the 11th. So it's two weeks, 14 days, very compact, very condensed. The good thing about this beautiful workshop is it happens in a creative space, second to none in, in the Caribbean, because the Shaw Park com complex is second to none in the, in the um, Caribbean. So it's going to be happening there at the Shaw Park complex. And it's open to all creatives, actually, right? All the students, for example, who are in fourth, fifth, and sixth form who are uh, taking part in performing arts, clothing and textile, art and craft, this is for you, for the creatives who have been, who believe that they have been probably overlooked, undertrained. This is for you. We've made a lot of excuses in the past and that has not been really helping anything. So okay. now we've come up with a solution of for creatives by creatives. Instead of looking outwardly always for the support, we have become that support and that change that we want to see. And we will start with ourselves by passing it down 
from generation to generation within the orange economy. So it Wonderful. doesn't die. Well, absolutely wonderful to hear this. Now, before we run out of time, there's so much we need to talk about, Sharon. Let's talk about the concert that's taking place as well. Can we have some more details? So I'm imploring to every Trinidad and Tobago citizen at this time. A few a few weeks ago, or a week or so ago, or thereabout, you had a very beautiful sister of mine on the stage, on your um, TV channel. I don't think that the world knows that that's one of my baby sisters. I'm talking about Kay Allen. Mm -hmm. A lot of the artists in the spectrum, in the, in, in the Tobago space, and some even in Trinidad, look up to me as a big sister. And that's probably because as an activist, I'm very bodacious, I'm very out there, I'm very up in the face of government and everybody else for things to be done right. So I was informed recently that there are a group of creatives who are experiencing medical challenges at this time. I mean, life-threatening from cancer to surgeries to really hardcore situations, not being able to fend for themselves through this. And I have seen a country that is more willing to do a funeral than to fight for fundraisers to keep the persons alive. And I won't play coy with saying that, right? Um, so we've come together and decided to do this massive benefit concert with the best of the best talent in Tobago. So when I say the creme de la creme, I mean the top of the top of everything in Tobago, dance, drama, um, singing, musicianship, technical as well, they're all on this show. And we intend to do a massive concert. We have a beautiful headliner Big reggae artist coming. I'm not going to release his name as yet. All I'm going to say is everybody love this Rasta man and every tune that he sings is a hit. So I'm going to be bringing on all my friends for this concert. And it's a fundraiser geared at raising funds for four persons in the creative sector who need emergency medical attention. One of them being my little sister, Kay Allen. Much as you see her there and she's smiling and she's singing and she has more strength then I do, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have to fight. I have to fight for them because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not willing to bury my creatives. Understood. Sharon, can you tell us who else is going to be in the lineup for this incredible benefit concert? I'm going to give you a few. We have the original Kwa Kwa. We have David Frank on, on, on a violin. We have Joan Archer, upcoming reggae artist who was recently in Jamaica. Adana Roberts, well, everybody knows Adana's name is a household name here in Tobago and as well in Trinidad. We're going to have Kristen Trim dancing, Lisa McSween dancing. We haven't seen her for a while. We're going to have a shootout between OJ and Kirsch. I think people need to come to see this one, OJ Richards and Kirsch. We're going to have, of course, Kay Allen. We're going to have Daryl Black. As I said, this is a reggae concert. We're going to raise the vibration. We're trying to elevate the standard of how we feel. We do believe that if we elevate the vibration in the space, a lot of the negative qualms that we are dealing with as a society are also going to be addressed and abated. You know, we can't always be pushing fire. We need to take it down sometimes. We do need and to take it down sometimes. Thank and you, Sharon. This concert is getting bad. We Thank do you, need to take it. <laughs> Sharon, thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but hoping we can have you back again soon to continue the conversation because there's so much more to discover uh -huh. with you, the uh -huh. phoenix still rising. Have a great day. Still rising. Thank you very much, love. Sharon Phillips, entertainer, fashion designer, and so much more joining us this morning to share a little bit about her fashion and elevate the workshop and, of course, the concert. Definitely a sensational event that's not to be missed. What do you think? I mean, I love the I love the concept. I love from the workshop angle, you know, boosting the orange economy and mm -hmm. and raising capacity is always definitely welcomed. And you know, she underscored something that we've seen time and time again when people in the entertainment industry oftentimes get sick. Uh, yeah. the, the fundraisers that have that have on, that have to happen as a result of whatever challenges may have been met up along the way. Um, so hopefully, the workshop can also uh, pay some education to what needs to happen in order to prevent you from ending up in that position in the first place. I agree with you 100%. In fact, sometimes I think we don't realize the toll that the um, creative process can actually take on the body as well. We'll be back in a short while right after this break.